before we invite and welcome the panelists, I have a very special speaker tonight. He's not a professor, and he's not a CEO. You may have like seen many CEOs, but I guess it's just not yet. I don't know what he wants to become when he uh, graduates and become an adult. But uh, without any kind of, I don't want to spoil the story, but he is a person who has a true passion for both people and robots. And this passion inspired him to do something very inspiring and also interesting. So uh, he's here to share his experience and his story. So please welcome Ethan Hong. Hello, thank you for having me. My name is Ethan Hong, and I'm a rising junior high school student attending Geffen Academy at UCLA. And that was me when I was a baby. Today, I would like to talk to you about something that is very personal to me, my robotics project, and an experience that had a profound effect on me, which changed the way I view robotics. The project is called Food Angel, and it is a food delivery robot for the homeless. As you can see, even at a very young age, I've been surrounded by and fascinated by robots. Thanks to my dad, who's a robotics professor at UCLA, I have always been in the lab environment and have seen how robots are created. I believe the purpose of robotics is to help people and to make the world a better place. And I have found that very meaningful and cool. Currently, I'm an intern at the robotics lab at UCLA and am working on a couple of different projects. The robot on the left is called Artemis. Artemis is a fully autonomous robot that can even play a game of soccer. For this robot, I helped with the vision system, and I just presented my paper on the work I did for this robot earlier today at this conference. We are also the world champions at the robot soccer competition, RoboCup, using this robot. Another project, which is my own, like I had mentioned earlier, is called Food Angel. Last year, a brand new robotics museum opened in Seoul, Korea. The museum is called Seoul Rain, or the Seoul Robotics and AI Museum. A few months ago, I had the honor to be invited to donate the Robot Food Angel as one of the permanent exhibitions. It was such a cool feeling to know that people would actually be able to see my robot on display. While visiting the museum to donate the robot, I was also invited to give a talk at a robotics workshop being held that day. I also gave a TV interview. How cool is that? I guess my project Food Angel resonated with many. So what is Food Angel, you might ask? Well, in this talk, I would like to tell you all about it and the journey I took to be here today. So in 2013, when I was about four years old, I moved from a small town in Virginia to Los Angeles. And immediately, one of the things that stood out to me was just how big the homeless population was. Going to school and coming back home from basketball practice every day, I would always see homeless people on the street outside my car window, which was a huge culture shock for me. In LA, homelessness is a significant issue, with the homeless population on the rise every year and LA ranking second in homeless population in the US just behind New York City. Another issue is food insecurity, which is the lack of consistent access to enough food for an active and healthy life. Along with homelessness, these are significant issues that need to be addressed. Currently, many food banks and food associations are trying to help with these issues, but due to many different factors, such as a stigma surrounding the homeless population and a lack of manpower and resources, this is still a significant issue for them to tackle. So knowing how significant of an issue both homelessness and food insecurity is in LA, and the many issues that food banks and food associations are facing, I thought to myself, why not use robotics to help with these issues? Meet Food Angel. Food Angel is a food delivery robot for the homeless to test what is possible using robotics technology. The goal of this project is not necessarily to solve the problem of food insecurity for the homeless, but rather to evaluate the use of robotics technology for this application and to help with the immediate need of a lack of food for the homeless. In addition, I also want to bring awareness to the issues of food insecurity and homelessness to both the robotics community and the general public. 
So in my neighborhood and on the UCLA campus, it is really common to see these food delivery robots for commercial use, and I'm sure you must have also seen them too. Seeing these robots, I thought to myself, why not use these to help deliver food for the homeless? As engineers, we often only think of the technical aspects on a robot, such as range of operations, payload capacity, speed, autonomy, and other aspects. But maybe the more important question we need to answer is the human-robot interaction issues. Think about it. When the robot approaches the homeless, what would they think? Would they know that the robot is trying to deliver food for them, or would they be scared and freak out? We need a way to communicate the intent of the robot. Now, how would we do that? Would it be better to use, say, an LED screen and speaker to announce what the robot is, or perhaps maybe even a simple handwritten sign? To contain the food on the robot, what would the box look like? Would we want a strong metal box in fear of vandalism, or perhaps a plastic and transparent plastic container so they can see what's inside? Or maybe even just a simple cardboard box, something that they are already familiar with. To dispense the food, typically we would consider an automatic mechanism for opening the top. However, those who are not familiar or comfortable with this type of technology might be intimidated to see a moving machine. So these are some of the questions I wanted to figure out and test in this project. So if I'm gonna be really honest, I didn't really know where to start. So I began by emailing a bunch of different food banks and food associations in my area. And luckily, the CFO at one of them responded and offered to have a Zoom meeting with me. In the meeting, I explained what my project was and he really resonated with what I was trying to do and personally invited me for a tour of the LA Food Bank facility. The LA Food Bank is the biggest food bank in LA and actually being able to go inside their facility was super impressive just to see how big their warehouse was, the scale of the operations, and even just how much food they had. It was also really touching to see just how many volunteers there were, including full-time employees, all trying to help with the issue of food insecurity. Here, you can see me inside a loading dock full of trucks where they bring in all the food to deliver out where it is needed. In a moment, you'll also see me entering a huge freezer, which is like negative 10 degrees inside, where they store all of their frozen food, so pretty cold. In addition to my tour of the food bank, I was also able to have a meeting with the staff where I could discuss many of the questions I had for my project and aspects, which was extremely helpful. So after my tour of the LA Food Bank, I felt much more prepared and ready to tackle this issue and began working on my project. Based off what I had learned, I decided to use an open source mobility platform for this application, which was a four-wheeled rover intended for the outdoors. And with that, I began to work. This was my first time doing a project on my own, so I had to learn many of those really simple skills, such as using hex key, lubricating shafts, or connecting wires and circuit boards for the very first time. And at times, it could get pretty frustrating for me. But thanks to the help of the graduate students who I consider my friends, they were able to help me out with many of the issues I had. However, at times, it could require more than one graduate student, and the entire lab had to come to save me. But thanks to their help, and after many long nights, I was able to finish my robot, which made me so proud and happy. Here, you can see me running the robot for the very first time, just minutes after I had finished making it. You can also see the graduate students who helped me looking on at the robot. In a moment, you'll also be able to see how I control my robot on my computer and what I see from its onboard vision camera, right over here. So now that the base platform was done, I had to consider the questions I had asked myself earlier about how to address the human-robot interaction issues that I had always wanted to figure out. Based off what I had learned at the food bank, I decided to use a simple cardboard box to hold the food and a handwritten sign to explain the intent of the robot. These were deliberate decisions as we wanted something that was familiar yet not overwhelming for the receiving homeless people. I even decided to add a cute little smiley face on the front to make the robot more approachable. And with that, my first prototype was completed. And last year, I ran my first ever test. So here you can see Food Angel on its first ever test. For this test, it was simply just to get the robot out of the lab and to test the base platform. But out of sheer luck, there was a real homeless person nearby. So I made the quick decision and decided to approach a gentleman. And here you can see what happened in this test. You can see the gentleman on the left, and it looks like he's noticed the robot. 
And now he's beginning to approach it. It looks like he read the sign and is beginning to open the box. This is looking promising. It looks like he's beginning to take the food out. This is looking pretty good. He's close. I think he understood the intent of the robot and this looks like a success. This is looking pretty good and yeah, I think this is a success. And my first test was a success. And in that moment, I was so happy that I quickly ran over and asked this gentleman if I could do an interview. That being said, meet Gary. Hi, hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good to meet you. Good to meet you. Okay. In our interview, Gary was gracious enough to answer many of the questions I had and talk about his experience with the robot. From this information, I was able to learn and gain a lot of feedback for further versions of this robot in the near future. But more importantly, towards the end of our interview, Gary said something that was quite simple yet very powerful. He said, I love chips. And I thought chips, and I thought I love chips. <laughs> and a tear rolled down his face. Now, it was quite simple what he said. It was just, I love chips. But in that moment for me, it reminded me of what robotics is really for. As engineers, we often get carried away with the math, science, and equations and forget about the true purpose of our work. Robotics is to help people, and we should never forget that. This experience motivated me even more to continue my work, and I truly believe that if I can help even just one more person like Gary and make them feel the way he did, it would have all been worth it. And this may just be one small robot, but this is just the beginning. Thank you.